that mean? Like, what is the vibe there? We were on the same scholarship. So um, there's something called the Alan Gray Orbis Foundation Scholarship. They choose top students across Southern Africa. Um, so maybe I was smart. <laughs> Yeah, grew into business. I think already by second semester we were running a business. Um, it was a financial education game type situation. Um, we ran that throughout Varsity. The business grew pretty quickly. Um, and post Varsity, we then came to Joburg. Um, he had a chance to go to Israel. He came back and he couldn't stop talking about all the agri innovation he had seen that side. And initially, agriculture is not a very sexy industry from the outside. It looks pretty dirty and all of that. But I'm a numbers guy. So I think once I started looking at the numbers, you know, we have most of the world's arable land, 60% odd um, is here of the world's remaining arable land. Almost everybody on the continent is dependent on agriculture for survival. It just didn't make sense that we were getting more food in than what we were taking out. You know, we are ideally positioned to be supplying the world 10 times over. And I think that's where the journey began. Pula is an agri-tech startup. Um, we've taken a different approach uh, to other tech startups in the sense that we've built an ecosystem. So we're not a single platform startup. And I think it really speaks to the nature of agriculture that quite often when you're trying to solve one problem, you get undone by another problem. So we've got three key components of the business. We have an input marketplace, which allows farmers to purchase inputs, get technical services. We have a trader platform where farmers can sell. And to close the loop, we have a funded dashboard where we link farmers uh, with financing. Um, I think farmers need practical solutions. I think there's a lot of tech solutions that are being brought into agriculture which don't really move the needle for farmers. You're dealing with people who have every possible problem thrown at them, you know, um, and a lot of them are actually doing it for survival. You know, if you're coming with solutions that don't move the needle, that don't address their immediate concerns, you know, they don't have a, don't have a big appetite to take that on. And I think that's often misconstrued as, uh, you know, farmers are not willing to adopt tech or whatnot, but I think if you're able to speak to farmers' as pain points, you know, which is where am I getting my inputs, where am I selling my product, where am I getting my financing, you'd find that the uptake is actually quite high. And I think that one of the lacking factors is solutions that actually speaks to the real pain points that farmers are facing, and that's what we're trying to do.